In this video, we're gonna level up your workflow in DaVinci Resolve with nine super powerful editing tips. And these techniques will not only speed up your editing, but they'll also make working in DaVinci Resolve a lot more enjoyable and make your projects a lot more professional. So let's dive in. All right, this first tip is gonna save you a lot of time when color grading. It's using power grades to quickly reuse your favorite color grades or to have a no tree preset readily available on all of your projects. So I have this talking headshot of me here with a finished grade and the lighting in this shot is always the same. The set is the same and I want to reuse this grade for every video, but I don't want to always build that entire grade from scratch each and every time. So if I right click on the preview here and then select grab still, you can see that it's just appeared in my stills gallery. Now I can apply this grade to whatever clip I want in this project by selecting another clip, right clicking the still and hitting apply grade. However, this still is only going to be available within this project. If I open another project or a new project, it's not going to be there. That is unless we move it to the power grades. So if you click this little icon in the top left corner here, it will open this side menu. And here you'll find a gallery folder named power grades. Then I'm gonna drag the still I just created over to the power grades folder. And I'm also going to rename it to, for example, talking head 2025. And now if I open up another project and head over to the power grade folder, the still is also going to be there. I can right click it, hit apply grade and boom, my favorite color grade is done in seconds. And this color grade is now going to be available on all of your projects, older ones or newer ones. Another great use for power grades is if you want to save a certain node tree. It works pretty much the same way. So let's say you have a typical node tree that you always use on every project. So for me, it's usually a CST in, a CST out, a LUT node, then four primary nodes. And I'll also have a few power window nodes ready to go in case I need them. Now all of these nodes are pretty much empty and they're not really doing anything, but I can still save this as a still by right clicking on the preview and then selecting grab still. And as you can see, this time I already had the power grade folder selected. So that means that this still was automatically saved into the power grades. And I'm just gonna name this one node tree. Now, when I head over to another project, I'm going to see this no tree power grade there and I can select all my clips, right click the power grade and hit apply grade. And automatically all these clips are going to have my preferred no tree already set up and good to start grading. The next tip is using overlays and safe guides. So in the top right corner of the viewer window, there's a little drop down menu that has a bunch of different overlays that you can activate. So we've got a few social media formats like one by one or nine by 16. And then you've also got a few broadcast and film aspect ratios. Default is going to give you a guide for your timeline aspect ratio. So in this case, that's 16 by nine. And what I find really handy is that it also shows you these little marks in the center. So if you're, for example, cropping to do a split screen, it's now really easy to find the middle of your frame. We've also got three safe area guides at the bottom here. Action is where you want to make sure all the action in the shot is happening. Titles are a little bit further in and this is where you want to keep all of your text. And lastly, we've got a center point, which can also be great to help line up certain shots or things like that. Tip number three is kind of similar to power grades and it's actually like two or three tips in one because they all use something called power bins. So power bins basically let you share media across different projects. So let's say you're always using the same background motion graphic, the same logo, the same little intro jingle or the same sound effects. And instead of always having to import this media over and over again in every new project you create, you can now use power bins. So if you head over to your media pool here in the edit page, you can see you've got your regular project bins right here. And you'll probably also see these smart bins at the bottom. Now to see your power bins, you need to go to the three dots in the top right of the media pool here and then activate show power bins. 
Now a new section has appeared here and you can add different bins to that power bin section. And now if you drag your media that you want to use across multiple projects into these bins, they will be available for you in all of your projects. An important thing to note here is that if you move or delete the source file from whatever folder it's in on your computer or hard drive, it will show as missing in the power bins. So I suggest having a specific folder on your computer unrelated to a project that you don't move where where you save those assets. Another cool thing about power bins is that once you have your assets imported, you can adjust certain settings in the inspector window. So for example, within the power bin, I'm going to change the size of this logo and also change the position to the top right corner. And now anytime I drag this logo onto a timeline, it will always have those settings already applied to it. And this will work for pretty much any type of media where you want to adjust certain parameters so it can really save you a ton of time. You can also drag things from your timeline into power bins. So I, for example, have this title here from Motion VFX, which I want to use across all of my YouTube video projects. So I'm going to customize it the way I want it to be the perfect color, size, and position. Now, instead of having to do this each and every time, I can just drag this title into the power bins and I will have a custom title preset ready to go in all of my projects. All right, now since everything in this video is about working faster and smarter in DaVinci Resolve, it's only fitting that the sponsor does exactly that. Motion VFX makes high quality plugins and effects that save you time and instantly level up your videos without needing to build anything from scratch. They've got some of the most useful tools I've seen for creators and filmmakers. For example, the MTuber series is perfect for YouTubers with ready-made subscribe buttons, pop-ups, and lower thirds. There's also M How To, which is co-created with fellow Belgian Joris Hermans and is ideal for tutorial content. M Reels is great for anyone who's working a lot with vertical video and M Documentary has some awesome assets for BTS content or even short films. And all of these plugins are super easy plug and play. You just drag them onto your timeline, tweak some of the settings and you're good to go. I actually started using Motion VFX back in my Final Cut days, and now I use their tools in DaVinci Resolve. But they also support Premiere and After Effects, so whatever software you're on, they've got you covered. And with a massive library of plugins, effects, LUTs, and titles, there's something for pretty much everyone. So I highly recommend checking them out. There's a link in the video description, and you can use the code STAN10 for a 10% discount. Big thanks to Motion VFX for supporting the channel. Tip number four is making good use of adjustment clips. So if you don't know what an adjustment clip is, you can find it in the effects library under effects. And adjustment clips are basically an empty clip where you can apply effects, change inspector parameters, or even apply color grades. Everything you apply to an adjustment clip will affect every clip that is underneath it on the timeline. So it can be very useful for a number of things. You can, for example, do a zoom in effect with an adjustment clip by adding an adjustment clip on top of your footage. With that adjustment clip selected, I'm gonna head over to the inspector window and I'm going to zoom in. And now if I play that back, once we reach the adjustment clip, we'll punch into the footage. The cool thing is that I can now move this adjustment clip to wherever I want to and that's where the zoom will be applied. I can also lengthen or shorten the adjustment clip depending on how long I want the footage to be zoomed in. And you can do this with a bunch of different effects like lens blurs, camera shakes, vignettes or whatever you want. The cool thing is if you have an adjustment clip that you keep using over and over again across your different projects, you can also save these into power bins. All you need to do is drag the adjustment clip you want to save over to the power bins and it will be available to use in all of your projects. The next step I want to show you is dynamic zoom. So dynamic zoom is going to make it super easy to do a zoom in or out over the duration of a clip. And the reason it's dynamic is because once you change the duration of the clip, it will automatically adjust the speed of the zoom to match the duration of the clip. You can find dynamic zoom right here in the inspector window. And once you toggle it on, it will by default do a zoom out. If you click this swap button, it will switch to a zoom in. And in the drop down menu here, you can choose to have a linear zoom, an ease in, an ease out, or both ease in and out. 
Now, if you want to change the direction of the zoom, so not just have a straight on zoom, you can head over to this drop down menu here in the left corner of your preview window and select dynamic zoom. Now you'll see that a green and a red box have appeared on your footage. The green box is where the zoom starts and the red box is where the zoom ends. So if I would want this to zoom in a lot more, I can adjust the size of the red box and it will zoom in all the way to that frame. And if I move that red box to another position, it will also move the frame as it zooms in towards that new position. You can even use dynamic zoom to do other movements. So let's make the green box and the red box more or less the same size. And now I'll move the red box over here and the green box, for example, over here. Now, if I play that back, we've got a nice sliding movement. So it's a really easy and fast way to create motion in your footage without having to do a bunch of keyframing. Of course, you can also use dynamic zoom on adjustment clips, which opens even more really great use cases of this tool. Tip number six is going to make your life a whole lot easier if you're doing effects like zoom ins with keyframes. There is, for example, a very popular effect, especially on YouTube, where you zoom in using keyframes. It helps draw the attention to either what you're saying or maybe something you're talking about. Now, you can make this look even better by easing in and out of that zoom. And I'm going to show you a super easy way to do this. So I want to zoom into this clip right here. And I'm going to start by adding a keyframe here then move my playhead to the right a little bit, add another keyframe and zoom in. Now, one way to add easing points is by going to your keyframes window, which since DaVinci 20, you'll find up here, then go to the keyframe curves, select both keyframes and hit this ease in and out icon right here. But there is a much easier and faster way to do this. So we're here in the inspector window where we just set our keyframe and zoomed into the footage. If I now right click onto that keyframe right here, I can select ease in. And if I then hit this arrow to the left, it will go to my previous keyframe. Again, I can right click on the keyframe and select ease out. And that is a much, much faster way of easing in and out of an effect like a zoom in like this one. Tip number seven is going to be a great help for lining up certain shots and it gives you even more reference points compared to the guides we saw before by adding a full grid to your timeline. So first we're going to add an adjustment clip to the timeline and then in your effects library under open effects, look for a grid, drag that onto the adjustment clip. And now you've got a grid overlay on your timeline. In the inspector window, you can adjust the number of rows and columns you want, or you can even change the size of the lines, but I usually leave it at standard. Now I can use this grid to easily align certain clips. For example, if I do a punch in or a zoom in like we've seen before, I can use the guides to make sure the eyes remain in the same position. This will make a punch in like this a whole lot more smooth. And with that grid, it's super easy to do. All right, so if you're creating a lot of vertical content and especially if you're using captions for that content, the next tip is going to be super useful for you. First off, let's go to timeline and select create subtitles from audio. Then DaVinci will automatically generate subtitles or captions for your video. Then once it's done, you can click on any of these subtitle text clips and you can customize individual captions. But let's head over to the track section right here. And I'm gonna make some adjustments right here. So for example, I'll change the font and then let's also make them all caps. Let's make the text yellow and also remove the stroke. And I'm also going to add a slight drop shadow to make it more visible. And now you'll see that because I made these adjustments in the track section, it applied those changes to all the captions all at once. So let's say that this is now your standard caption setup and you want to use this exact preset on every video, but you don't want to always change these settings every time. Well, all you need to do is go over to these three dots here on the top and select save track as preset. Give it a name like YouTube shorts captions and then click OK. Now, the next time you create subtitles, all you need to do is go up to the track section, click on the three dots, select your preset and select load preset and it will automatically apply your saved settings, which will save you a ton of time. If you've ever accidentally deleted the audio from a clip on your timeline, this tip is going to be a game changer. It's called match frame. Select the clip in your timeline where you deleted the audio. Then press the shortcut F on your keyboard or click this match frame icon here on the bottom of your preview window. 
DaVinci will then open the original source file from your media pool and it will select the exact frame where you have your playhead on the timeline. It will also automatically have in and out points matching the clip on your timeline. Now you can click the little audio wave icon right here and drag that audio underneath your clip. Or you can hold shift and drag to bring the audio onto your timeline. And it's really that easy. Your audio is recovered without messing up anything in your video. From here, what I recommend doing is once you've lined up the audio and the video is selecting both clips, right click and then choose link clips. That way they will stick together. All right, those are nine tips for speeding up your editing workflow in DaVinci Resolve. Now, if you are hungry for more DaVinci Resolve tips and tricks, definitely check out this video next. And if you have any questions, go ahead and drop them down in the comments. I'll do my best to answer all of them. Anyway, that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.